Yo, what's going on, everybody? This is James Jackson with MachineMasters.com, checking in once again with another Machine Masters tutorial. What I'm going to be showing you today is how to record MIDI data using the machine into Studio One. Uh, what I'm going to be showing you is how to use your machine as a MIDI controller for Studio One and also how to manipulate your machine groups and your drum sounds and drop them into Studio One in as separate tracks. So we're going to have to do a little setup first. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to uh, download the machine template uh, to use with Studio One. Now the machine template you download right out of Studio One um, and you need to load that into your controller editor. I've already done that but I'm going to do it again here in this video just to show you how to do it. So the first thing you need to do is when you open up Studio One you go to configure external devices and when you hit configure external devices uh, you'll see that I don't have my machine controller set up at the moment. But what we're going to do is we're going to click on Add. And then over here on the lift left, you see you've got your uh, list of brands. You can see I've got NI Machine Control already ready to go. And so what you're going to do then is you're going to hit this little attachment. And that's going to download you the machine template. So we're going to go ahead and save that. get rid of that and then what we're going to do is we're going to set this to receive from MIDI and MIDI in and we're going to set this to send to machine controller out hit OK and now you can see I've got my machine controller right there but before we get before we do that you gotta go into your into your uh, controller editor and import the template. So I'm going to come over to my controller editor. Now again I've already got the template imported. You can see it's over here. Um, I actually have imported it twice. But what you're going to do is you're going to go to file, open template, and wherever you saved it. So you can see I saved it right here. You click open and boom it's going to put the template right in. Piece of cake. So I'm going to go back over here to Studio One and I'm going to open up my open up my uh, project here. So as you can see my machine controller def defaulted into MIDI mode when I open up the controller editor. So and that that happens it's not a big deal. Um, you're actually going to end up going into MIDI mode uh, to do this tutorial. So first what I'm going to do uh, we're going to get started. We're going to load up Machine 2 as a VST, and then we're going to load up a Machine Group. So I'm going to take the Machine 2 VST, drop it right in. And as the Machine 2 VST drops in, you'll notice that the machine is going to power up, just like you would if you open it up in standalone. And I'm going to go ahead and uh, put a kit in here. Uh, let's see. I'm going to, you know what? I'm going to give a shout out to my man over at, at the machinewarehouse.com, William McKnight. I'm going to open up one of his boss of the trap drum kits. We'll go with, uh, let's go with uh, Rose. I'm a fan of Rick Ross, kind of, <laughs> depending on the day. So I've got the group loaded up. So there it is. So right now we've got our machine in controller mode, which is how you would normally have it set up if you were in standalone. So what we're going to actually be doing, we're going to be actually using our machine in MIDI mode, and we're going to be triggering these sounds onto the, onto the Studio One MIDI track here. So what we're going to do is we're going to come over here to Group, and we're going to click on the Channel tab here. And of course, you can do this right from your hardware. You can come over here to Group, then you can click on your Channel tab over here. Uh, we're going to click on Input. And you see, it only gives you MIDI as an option. And then we're just going to click Active. And then we see this root note right here. Uh, we're going to leave this at C1, but this root note is very important. Uh, when we flip the machine into MIDI mode, uh, whatever your root note is, is what this pad is going to be. And then it'll go up chromatically. So I've got it set at C1. It's a pretty easy, you know, root note to remember. And with uh, with the uh, 
with machines MIDI mode or with uh, the studio with the MIDI mode um, enabled with the uh, Studio One template, actually all of these are are C's. So it only makes sense that you use this as a, you make this a C. So all right, there we go. I've got this set up. Got my MIDI input active. Then we're gonna come over here to output. Nothing there in the group sound group. And over here in sound and MIDI, just gonna make sure that this one's one, this one's two, this one's three, so on and so forth. So now I'm gonna close this out, and now I'm gonna put my machine into MIDI mode, and I'm gonna hit Shift Control. So, and then what we're gonna do is we're gonna make sure we have the Studio One template turned on. So if you hit Shift and you hit Template, you can go through all your templates over here. So I'm gonna turn on the Studio One template. So you just scroll up to it. Hit load. There it is. So now I'm going to hit shift. And I'm going to hit pads. And now what the pads are going to do, it shows me the note value for all of my pads. So as you can see, A is set to negative to C negative one through D sharp zero. And then if you go to B, it starts at C zero and goes to D sharp one, C, C one to D sharp two, so on and so forth, all the way up through H till you get all the way up the keyboard, basically. So as you remember, we set our root note to C1. So I'm gonna come over here to button what group C is, and you can see as I hit the pad, I've, I'm hitting the, the kick drum from, you know, from the, uh, from the machine group. And two, it's got the snare, hi-hat, so on and so forth. So I'm gonna just gonna do a, a quick drum loop real quick, nothing major. So you can see, just got something going on. Just for the sake of the example here, I'll even go in here and quantize it because, uh, you know, I know that's to some people it's like, oh, my God, please quantize that. So, you know, I'll get that quantized for you. Just so, you know, everybody's feeling comfortable while we go through this tutorial. So I've got my my drum loop here. No, it actually sounds worse quantized, but, you know, just for the example, we'll deal with it. So here's the drum loop. And it's in here as MIDI data, and it's triggering the machine group. But say you want to, you know, you want to do dropouts, and you want to do mutes and solos and stuff like that, and you don't want to come in here, and as you're arranging your track, you know, you keep duplicating this, and, you know, you're trying to figure out, oh, well, this is my hi-hat, and I want to delete a hi-hat here, and I want to get rid of, you know, the snare here. You know, too much work. So what you can do is you actually right-click on this region, click on explode pitches to tracks and now when you hit play you can see your hi-hats are right here and then your snare is on hit right here so everything is separate separated so so you can go do your mutes do your dropouts so on and so forth but when you come over here into the mixer you see that there's still only one fader controlling the volume for everything so now say you want to, you know, you have these set up as, you know, you got them set up here, exploded your pitches to tracks, but now you want to have individual volume control over all of these instruments. Again, that's not a problem. It's very simple to do. We're going to double click on, on the, uh, on, uh, we know one of the tracks so we can bring up machine and we're going to click on the kick drum here. I'm going to click on output. We're going to go to audio and we're going to set the destination to external one and then we're going to do the same thing for the snare set the destination to external two now and then for the hi-hats which are on pad three you guessed it we're going to set it to external three so now i'm going to close this out and when i press play all you're going to hear is the kick so you're probably thinking well where the heck is my uh, is my hat and my snare so what we're going to do is over here, right here, you're going to click on this drop-down arrow. 
going to click expand and now this is showing those 16 virtual uh, outputs that a uh, machine has so if we activate these two outputs now we hit play so now you can see you got your kick your snare your hi-hat everything's all separated it all sounds good it's all good to go it's all cool in the gang and now what's cool about this is you can even with these all separated they're still controlled by they're still controlled by this main MIDI track here. So if you hit, you know, you can hit record, but this isn't going to do anything for you. But if you hit record over here, see, now you can still, you still have access to these. So, if, you know, if I hit, go to start over, hit record. So you can always overdub and, you know, continue on doing what you're, you know, doing what you're doing, making things happen. So, so that's it, ladies and gentlemen. That's how you do it. Um, this is a really great tip if you're using machine just as like a drum sequencer and you're using like Studio One for all of his instruments and you're using all of your virtual instruments in Studio One as a VST host and you're just using machine for tracking drums. This is an outstanding way to go. Um, you know. I hope I answered the question and I hope I answered it, you know, thoroughly and I hope I answered it in a way that everybody understands. If you have any questions, feel free to drop them down in the comments below. And once again, I'm James Jackson with MachineMasters.com signing off.